Greetings Indie Warriors, Old Gamer Joe here with I Dream of Indie. Pick a card, any card, because today we are taking a look at Card Shark on Steam. Let me preface this review by saying, I grew up wanting to be a magician. I absolutely love card tricks. One could say I was almost all Magic Joe, not all Gamer Joe, but then I watched that show where all of the magic tricks were revealed. I don't know if you folks out there remember seeing that one, and it kind of stole some of the luster for me. Needless to say, I've played a lot of games that feature cards over the years, like Poker Pretty Girls Battle. You might want to check that review out on the channel, shameless plug, but I've never played one that's quite like Card Shark, for better or worse. Card Shark takes place in 18th century France where you are a simple servant who gets caught up in a very dangerous situation. One thing leads to another, a violent encounter takes place, and you end up entangled with Comte de Saint Germain. This gentleman loves using trickery with his card games in order to con people out of money, and he gets you involved. The writing is actually my favorite part of Card Shark. I was really interested what was going to be happening to these characters next as they went from village to village, what kind of trouble they would get into. It's interesting to see your character suddenly caught in this criminal organization and even in a situation where he's donating money to them. As the game does warn, there are depictions of suicide, death, and violence. Obviously, gambling is a big part of the game too, and plenty of profanity, so this is not a game for children. If your kids want to see a magic trick, I'd stick to the old pull a rabbit out of your hat or something. So as the old magicians used to say, don't try this at home. Unfortunately, the gameplay here is where I started to feel like I was the one locked in a straitjacket going a little bit crazy. In a lot of ways, Card Shark feels like a game where you're relying on reaction and memorization more than anything else. Before you hit the wagon to go con people out of gold coins, you'll need to go through quite a few different tutorials as you learn the different tricks. While it's not a prerequisite to be familiar with card games, the game will even go as far as telling you what all the different suits mean, it is helpful to at least have have some degree of familiarity with how card games work. The tricks that you'll be learning start out pretty simple. For example, you'll have to hold a certain direction on the analog stick to pour some wine so that you can get a sneak peek at your opponent's hand. Once you know what your opponent has, you'll be able to tip off your partner on which card is the best. You do this by having a little bit of a code between one another. So say for example, you see a queen of spades, you'll be able to tell your friend what suit it is by wiping the table in a certain motion. You'll go clockwise for one suit, you'll go counterclockwise for another, or up and down, something to that effect. As you progress through the game, you'll employ even more methods like stacking the deck or even using some sleight of hand. In fact, when you run out of money in Card Shark, which is bound to happen at some point, there's a certain area that you can go to on the map where you will mostly rely on your sleight of hand in order to get more money again. Here's the worst part of Card Shark, in my opinion. It's the stress meter at the bottom of the screen while you're trying to con people out of their money. The longer you take, the more suspicious you look, the more that suspicion will raise and if it hits a certain point, they'll catch on to you completely and maybe even kill you depending on which character you're dealing with. Get it? Dealing? Because it's cards? I also just don't think all of these tricks are created equal. Some of them are kind of fun in a simplistic sort of way, others are just obnoxious. One got me raging quite a bit where you have to pick up the cards in a certain order so that the cards will fall in a particular pattern so that your friend gets the best set of cards. The problem is that these cards are facing in every which direction so you would have to tap the analog stick a certain way and it really messed with my head. I couldn't wrap my mind around it. This led to me having to repeat that tutorial over and over again and I got rather annoyed with it quickly. That's what a lot of card shark is. Frustration and if their goal as developers here was to make players feel nervous, anxious, and frustrated, they definitely achieve that. That's just not the way I like to feel when I'm playing a game. Just imagine sitting old gamer Joe at a pro poker tournament, nervous ass dude like me with a lot of money on the line, I'd feel really scared. So yes, this game does evoke that emotion out of the player quite brilliantly, I just didn't like feeling that way. I totally recognize though that somebody might like that. There are also 
some dialogue choices to be made throughout the game which are pretty cool, but selecting different options as I did fail multiple times even when I swear I beat one guy once, really didn't seem to have that much of an impact at all and led to the same outcome. So often Card Shark felt like it was giving players the illusion of choice. One cool little touch in this game though is if you do run into death, you literally run into death, which means you have to face off with this character in order to save your life. So that was kind of poetic, literally playing for your life. Graphically, this game incorporates a nice watercolor aesthetic with an autumnal quality to the colors. There's a lot of light greens and some darker reds and some beautiful use of different colors throughout the game. Everything kind of sways gently in the wind and the animations of all the different characters look really fluid, though the game does move at a rather slow pace. The frame rate, that was not an issue at all. It actually ran beautifully on my rig, so I don't think that's going to be a problem for anybody, but it's just a slow feeling game. It's almost like, I don't know, it kind of feels like a flip book at times until you actually get to the card table and then your stress goes through the roof. I also enjoyed the orchestrated soundtrack here that does fit that 18th century France vibe quite well. Some really wonderful orchestration, lots of stringed instruments as you might expect. It fits the mood of the game very well in most cases. Sounds very sophisticated or dare I say it, artsy fartsy. As far as accessibility options in this game, there are three different difficulties to choose from and you could switch them at any time. I tried going down to the easiest just to see if this game was less stressful. Didn't really seem to have all that much of an impact for me to be honest. Outside of that, not too much here really worth mentioning. You can change the languages, the master volume, volume of the music, that kind of thing. Haptic feedback can be toggled on or off. You can change your screen resolution, go full screen vsync, most of the basics. So in the end, is this gonna be a deal or no deal? Wait, that was that game show with Howie Mandel. I guess it depends on your amount of tolerance for stressful situations. I personally did not enjoy playing this one as much as I liked pretty much everything else about it. The visuals are really enjoyable to watch. I liked where the story was going, despite the fact that my choices didn't always seem to matter. But it's a game I had to stop playing, and I don't have any blood pressure medication, so I wasn't going to risk it. Really neat ideas here. It tries something new, and I always appreciate that in an indie game, but I'm gonna have to fold this time, sorry. Thank you so much for supporting clickbait free content here at iDream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to shout out our brave indie warriors and legends that help make this channel possible. At the indie warriors tier, we have Bill, Christian Cruz, Adriana Amato, CJR, PSC, Julian Colbus, Jesse, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Strick9, and Chic Geek. At the indie legends tier, we have Jen Rose, Larkison, Mitchell Hall, Peach, Skeptism, C Coil, Nathan Moore, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beefarini's Business Cody, Carmen Red, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, and Ophidian Mind. Thank you so much for everything that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Head on down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.